Hi everybody, it's Webby. Uh, welcome back to a beautiful day here in Melbourne, Australia. Um, we're going to be having a look at the brand new 2022 Ford Everest lineup. I'm going to be showing you around each different model individually, but I just want to start the video off by showing you some of the differences as a sort of a head-on view, if you like, so it's easy for you guys to spot which model is which. So we're going to be having a look at the Trend, the Sport and the Platinum today. Uh, I haven't got the Ambiente here on, unfortunately. Uh, that'll be a separate video later. Um, so as I said, I'm going to grab the camera, I'm going to sort of take you around each different model from the front uh, and then you can pick out which model is which before we get into the full video of the car. Um, so let me grab the camera and I'll show you around. Right, so let's start off with the trend because that seems an obvious place to start. Now the visual differences on this one to the other models uh, is as you can see just here we've got the chrome bar going across the middle of the front grille. On the lower section this um, bit here is body coloured and then you've got chrome around the fog lights there. So that's one easy way to spot it. Also the trend doesn't have the lettering on the top of the bonnet like the other two models does. When we come to the Sport as you can see, the front grille is now gloss black. Um, that bar across the middle uh, just there is all gloss black. Uh, and also the splitter section just down there along the bottom. Uh, and also the fog light surrounds. Um, but then we've also got the word Everest emblazoned across the bonnet in black as well. Uh, it's always black, doesn't matter what colour the car is. Uh, then we come to the platinum. So the obvious cue there is obviously it's got platinum written across the front of the car. Uh, so that really gives it away. Um, but you've also then got uh, sort of the satin cud grille uh, running across the middle of the grille there. Uh, and then at the bottom, you've got the satin finish to the lower section, uh, also around the fog light surrounds as well. So that's how you spot the three different models uh, of the new Everest. Very, very easy uh, to sort of spot the differences between the three models. Um, so now we're going to get into the main video. Uh, I'm going to show you uh, all the exterior design uh, of all the different models on the Everest in single videos. Uh, and then we'll have a look around on the inside uh, and I'll show you all some of the new tech and some of the safety features. Uh, so here we have the top of the range Everest Platinum then. Uh, very distinguishable by things like the 21 inch alloy wheels which are standard, uh, the C-shaped LED daytime running lamps uh, and you also get the matrix LED headlights as well. Uh, so that's uh, a better headlight than is standard on things like the Sport and the Trend. Um, so it gives you adaptive headlights so you can see around corners, uh, but also adaptive high beams as well, which is a really, really cool feature. Other things you'll notice that are different from the other models, you've got this satin silver sort of bar running through the front grille uh, and also around the edges as well. And also the platinum lettering across the front of the bonnet. Uh, so it's a really, really good looking car. Um, it does feel a little bit more upmarket as well. Um, that's something I'll show you more as we go inside the car because you can feel the difference in quality of things like the leather seats, the leather steering wheel, um, and then just some of the other features you get there as well. Um, one thing you'll also notice on the outside, is you've got this extra sensor on the side of the front and the rear bumper. Uh, that's for the active park assist. Um, that's a separate video I'm gonna be doing because that system's also on the range of wild track. So I'll use one of these two vehicles to uh, make a video and show you how it works because that is a really, really impressive bit of kit. Uh, other bits and pieces down the side of the car, uh, you've then got the V6 badging there on the side of the front wing, uh, the platinum badge across the bottom of the door, uh, obviously side steps are standard, uh, door mirrors and door handles are body coloured, uh, and then you've got the chrome around the uh, window frame as well, so it's a very sort of upmarket looking car where something like say the Sport has got a very aggressive sort of sporty look, the platinum is much more about luxury and uh, refinement, uh, so it's yeah, quite different to the Sport. Uh, but a very, very good looking car. Uh, and then the roof rails are slightly different as well. Not only are they the satin silver color, but they actually sit above the roof line. Uh, whereas the Trend and the Sport sit flush to the roof. These have actually got about an inch gap uh, in between the roof rail and the actual um, sort of top of the roof. Um, great if you're gonna be tying stuff down uh, and sort of attaching things to your roof. Uh, so the back of the Platinum, uh, again, it's got the same design as the other models in the range, so it's much squarer not quite as rounded as the previous model. Uh, across the back, we've actually got the Platinum logo uh, embossed into this sort of plastic section behind this sort of Perspex cover. 
uh, where the other models have got the word Everest written there, so this gets the platinum. Um, so this one then gets the Everest on the bottom of the tailgate instead, uh, just to sort of separate the different models so you can tell this is actually the platinum. Uh, then you've got the four-wheel drive badge on the back of the tailgate there as well. Uh, now obviously this is electric, but the handle has actually moved. It used to be down the bottom here, and now the button is actually under here, which on the old model is where everybody thought it used to be, including us salespeople. We used to think it was there too. Um, other bits and pieces you get, obviously it's seven seats as standard, uh, but the platinum is the only one where you get these buttons here, so you can actually drop your seats down just at a touch of a button. Um, you haven't got to touch it, press the button once, it'll fold the seats down automatically for you. Um, so that's a really nice feature to have, um, just to sort of separate this from the other models in the lineup. Now in terms of factory fitted options for the Platinum, there's a couple of things you can add on. This car hasn't got the tow pack, so that will give you the tow bar and also the electric brakes, so that's one option you can have. The car comes standard with 21 inch alloy wheels and road tyres, but if you're someone who's going to be doing a bit of off-roading or if you happen to live down a gravel road, for no cost, you can actually swap out the 21 inch wheels for 18 inch wheels, and then you also get all-terrain tires at the same time. Now what I'll do is I'll put on the screen uh, all the costings for the Platinum. Uh, so it'll be pre-on-road costs, you just need to add on your normal on-road costs in whichever state you live in. Um, but yeah, cost of the car, plus also all the factory accessories uh, that you can have on the Platinum. Um, so the next bit we're going to do is actually have a look inside the car, uh, because as I said, this does feel a little bit more upmarket than the trend or the sport, uh, particularly things like, like I say, the softer leather and bits and pieces like that. Um, so we'll do that as the next port of call. Now if you're enjoying the video, don't forget to give it a like, also subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. There's going to be lots more videos coming with the new Everest. Uh, I've done separate videos for the trend and the sport, I'll also be doing the Ambiente as well. So if you want to learn about those different models, uh, again, hit subscribe, hit notification, uh, so that will tell you every time a new video comes out. I'm also going to be doing a separate drive video as well. Uh, and so this car has only just arrived at the dealership, it hasn't been through the workshop, uh, so it needs to have all this pre-delivery work done before we can actually drive it. Um, so this is just a bit of a, a tour of the car in this video. Um, so yeah, when the car's actually through the workshop, we're going to take it out for a drive, because I want to show you how nice this thing is to drive. Um, I was lucky enough to drive one at a Ford dealer training event uh, a month or so ago uh, and I was really, really impressed, blown away by how quiet it is inside. It's really, really impressive. Um, so yeah, we'll do that in a different video. Uh, so now let's go and have a look inside and I'll show you some of the features inside this new Everest Platinum. Right, so let's jump inside then. Uh, keyless entry, obviously. Uh, even the base model gets keyless entry. Um, now when you come to the Platinum, you do get things like this sort of fake wood here uh, sort of on the door which is actually quite nice uh, we've got memory seating positions which we saw on the sport as well the big difference are these seats though um, they're beautifully they've got a sort of this diamond sort of stitch pattern to them um, you've got the perforations because they're heated and ventilated so you get the air conditioned seats as well uh, you also get the nice little platinum badge there just on the back of the seat uh, and then the sort of stitching down the sides. Uh, plenty of bolstering actually. It's sort of fairly uh, a sort of sporty seat if you like. Um, the normal sort of buttons down here uh, to control your electric seats. But even nice bits and pieces, like on the floor mats, you've got a platinum badge as well. So it just makes it look a little bit more expensive uh, than the other models in the range. Uh, the general dash layer is exactly the same, but we'll have a look at that in a little bit more depth in a second. Uh, but before we jump in, let me just show you, uh, here we've got the stop start button for the engine. Uh, we've then got a button there to open and close the electric tailgate. You've got the little twist dial there to uh, turn your headlights on and off, uh, front and rear fog lights, and then you've got the plus and minus buttons to adjust the brightness uh, of the lights on the digital instrument cluster. Uh, so that's sort of pretty standard stuff. You do also get a little pop-out cup holder as well, uh, which is quite a handy little device to have. A little bit more sort of wood trim there. You get a nice sort of bit of leather here as well, so that looks a little bit more upmarket in the other models and the stitching from the seats carries over too. Uh, the stitching is also in the steering wheel as you can see here as well so that looks really really nice and a bit of gloss black plastic there uh, just to sort of add to the ambience of the car but as you can see it looks really really nice in here uh, it does feel quite upmarket. Uh, I'll open up the huge sunroof in a minute and so you can see the sunroof there. The platinum is actually the only model that gets the sunroof uh, so I'll open it up uh, when the car's facing a different direction because we get blinded otherwise. Um, but anyway, 
enough talking, let's jump in and have a look around this Everest Platinum. So I'm going to start the engine because it's quite warm in here. Just bring on the air conditioning. So this is the view you get from the driver's seat. Uh, it's very similar to the other models in the range. The only exception is the fact that in the Platinum, you get the 12.4 inch digital instrument cluster. So it is a little bit different to the one you get in the Ambiente trend and the Sport. I will be doing a separate video of this because it is quite different to those other models. Um, so I want to be able to sort of show you through the different functions, uh, talk to you about some of the features and how you can sort of configure the display. Um, so that will be coming in a separate video. Um, on the left side of the steering wheel, we've got the normal controls for uh, obviously your adaptive cruise control and the volume and the voice control, uh, your lane centering. The other side buttons there, they actually control the digital instrument cluster in front of the driver. Uh, then you've got your skip tracks um, on music or preset radio stations uh, and then button there to answer and end your phone calls. Uh, so sort of general stuff that is fairly similar to the other models. But as I said, it just feels a little bit more upmarket in here. Um, and then you've got, like I said, the leather that runs across there on the top of the dash. You've got the wood there as well. So it does feel really, really nice. Uh, and I've actually got, oh, I've got the cooled seats switched on. Uh, as you can see by the little blue button there, it tells me the cooled seats are switched on. Um, on a day like today, which is oh, 30 degrees apparently. I don't think it is, but the car's telling me it's 30 degrees outside. Um, now this screen in front of you, that's the 12 inch SYNC 4 screen. Um, so that gets standard built-in satellite navigation. You've got wireless Apple CarPlay, wireless Android Auto. Um, so it's a really sort of bang up to date entertainment system. Um, absolutely fantastic. I have done a video of that, um, which I did on a Ranger, uh, but that was um, on the smaller 10, 10 inch screen. Um, if I find any differences between this system on the Everest and the system that's on the Ranger, I will actually make another video for it. Uh, so keep an eye out for that one. Um, just in case that does come along and there's you know, a few changes on it. But as a general rule, it's a fantastic system to use. Um, as I said, it's got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, so um, you can just jump in and they pair automatically as soon as you get in the car. Um, then the bottom, you've got your ventilation controls. Um, with the seats, as I said, they're heated and air conditioned. Uh, so heat goes up the top, cool goes down the bottom. It's staying firmly on cool today because it's a bit warm. Uh, we've also got some physical buttons as well, which is nice to see. Um, so either side, you can adjust the temperature of your climate control. In the middle, you can do the volume for the radio. And then we come down underneath there. So we've got the wireless charging pad for your mobile phone and a couple of USB, uh, USB A and a USB C charging points as well. And then an extra bit of storage. We've got the uh, a little bit more storage there with the infamous sort of chip symbol there. Then we've got a couple of cup holders, uh, so that's quite nice to see. Then we've got the electronic e-shifter, uh, so just like a standard gear stick, uh, but just as electronic. On the side of that, you've got the manual button and the plus and minus to change gears as well. And then coming down, we've got the electronic handbrake. We've got the button there for the semi-active parking system. Uh, as I said before, I'm going to be doing a video on that, uh, just to show you how to use that. Because it is that, a, so again, that's another upgrade from the previous model um, on the, uh, the parking system on the previous Everest Titanium. Then you've got a button you can turn off your traction control, and then that one will deactivate the stop start system on the engine. This one here will bring on the four wheel drive modes on the uh, Sync 4 screen. So if we press that, that then brings it into the four wheel drive mode. So it automatically brings on the front facing camera and it's giving you these sort of tracks as to where the car is going to be heading towards. So if you were driving in a four-wheel drive situation, it would then show up things like if there was a, a low tree stump or a sudden drop in, uh, like a hit, you're going to go down a hill or something. Um, so that allows you to see stuff like that in front of you. Uh, then next to that, we've got the, uh, the drive modes and the four-wheel drive modes. Um, so you can actually put the car into two-wheel drive if you wanted to, which wasn't an option in the previous Everest. Uh, so you can have two high, you can have four high, so it's going to be permanent four-wheel drive. Or you can have the full-time four-wheel drive, where that system will actually distribute power uh, to whichever wheel needs it most. Uh, so that's quite a clever uh, setup as well. And then you've got your forward low if you're going to be doing some serious off-roading. Now you can twist this dial here for the drive modes, uh, as you can see there. 
So if I show you how that works, I'm going to twist this dial, but I'll show you up here on the screen what that does to the display for you. So let's just zoom in very slightly. So when you twist it, you actually twist it anti-clockwise. So there, every time I say automatically is in normal. It's quite a nice blue color actually, I've not seen that before. That's not a color we get in Australia. Uh, so normal is your default mode. So once you've done that, you then twist it clockwise and you cycle through the different drive modes. So you've got economy, tow and haul. So if you're gonna be towing something heavy, so as you can see then, it automatically puts the car into four-wheel drive, um, the full-time four-wheel drive setting. Uh, then we go off to slippery. Um, so again, it keeps it in four-wheel drive. And then we've got mud and ruts. So if you're gonna be going on some muddy sort of terrain, so it puts it into four high instead. And then as you can see there, it's actually turned on the rear diff lock automatically for you. Um, so that's basically designed for you to be in a um, you know, going through muddy fields or bits and pieces like that, that's actually a really cool feature to have. So on the graphic there, again, it also shows that your rear diff lock is on, but these two uh, displays here, so you can see the front to rear angle of the car and then the side to side angle. I know there's much more uh, complicated words for those two descriptions, but that's, that's how I sort of describe them. Uh, and then from there, you've also got the sand mode as well. Uh, so again, if you're gonna be driving on the sand at all, it alters all the uh, responses of the car, so accelerator, steering, brakes, uh, and all these different drive modes to uh, take into account which sort of road surface you're gonna be on. And then you can go all the way back to the beginning. You can put the car back in normal mode. Uh, there you go, four by four comes off. Uh, so it goes back to full time four wheel drive. Uh, and then you can just go off and do whatever you want. So then behind that dial there, uh, we've got a nice bit of storage there under the centre armrest, plus a 12 volt power socket. Um, that soft leather actually extends to the centre armrest as well. It does feel a lot nicer than the leather you get in the Trend and the Sport, particularly, like I say, on the seats, on the armrest, uh, that bit of leather up there as well. It does make the platinum feel much more upmarket inside. And even then, the stitching on the seats carries through to the back of the car. So the people in the back don't get missed out either. It's a very, very nice place to be. Now, if you want to open the sunroof, you've got the buttons up there. So we can just do the blind itself. So you can, these buttons will do the blind. So yeah, you can open it just a little bit there. So if you just want a bit of light at the front, we can press that again. And then that will open up fully. So particularly on the daylight today, which is very sunny, I'll try and hide the sun there so you don't get blinded. Um, so yeah, it's a lovely sort of feature to have of having that massive panoramic sunroof. Uh, and then you've got the buttons there. So if you just want to sort of open the roof, you can just press that button there. And there we go, instant fresh air. Uh, so yeah, on day like today, it's absolutely fantastic uh, to have a sunroof. Another nice feature on the Platinum is the 12 speaker B&O sound system. Uh, which sounds absolutely fantastic. I can't play any music for copyright issues, unfortunately. Um, but then on the screen here, you've got all your uh, different sound settings as well. But you can also put the sound system into surround mode, uh, so you can really sort of make your music come alive. Uh, like I say, it sounds absolutely fantastic. Uh, so whatever music you're listening to, uh, the system really, really pumps out some decent sound. So the actual driving position is really, really nice. Um, aided by the fact you can get really good adjustment with these electric seats. Um, the steering wheel, oh, as I say, this, this leather is superb on this steering wheel. It's like a nappa leather. Uh, really, really comfortable, uh, very sort of upmarket. We've got the lever down the left-hand side. Uh, steering wheel now comes in and out. Right into the 21st century for the new Everest. Um, but yeah, you can get a perfect driving position. Visibility out the front is absolutely superb, as is the side windows as well. Uh, we've now got blind spot monitor standard on all the Everest as well this year, uh, which is really great, uh, obviously when you're driving along the freeways and bits and pieces like that. Um, also, when you hook up a caravan, you can put your measurements into the Sync 4 display, and then the blind spot monitor will adjust its sensitivity for whatever you're towing behind you, uh, which is a really, really clever feature to have. Um, so when you get your car, you can put in your boat, your caravan, your horse float, whatever, save them all into the Sync 4 system, and then whenever you need to use them, you just choose whichever one you want, and the blind spot monitor will adjust itself automatically. Uh, so a really clever feature. Uh, so now I've got my 
seat and my driving position. So let's have a look in the back and see how much space we've got. So as you can see, getting in the back of the Everest Platinum is really, really easy. Uh, it's nice to have the side steps as standard, but it's also great having these grab handles as well. Uh, particularly good if you've got young kids or elderly parents. Uh, they're really, really good to have. Um, you've got the wood trim here that we had on the front doors and also on the dash uh, that carries through to the back of the car as well, as does this nice sort of leather topped finish to the top of the door as well. Um, so yeah, it definitely feels a lot more premium inside uh, than any of the other models in the range. Uh, leg rim is just as good as all the other models as well. You can fit your feet under the uh, driver's seat slightly. Um, lift up the driver's seat and that would obviously be better too. In terms of headroom, you do lose a little bit with that sunroof, um, but the plus point is you get so much light coming into the cabin, it feels nice and light and airy. Um, plus you get a good view out of the front, you've got great um, sort of visibility out the side as well. Um, so for me personally, if I was gonna buy an Everest, this is exactly what I would buy because uh, I do like the sunroof, um, just lets so much more light into the car, it's really, really good. Now another added feature you get here on the Platinum, on the front we had the heated and air-conditioned front seats, but in the back you get heated seats as well for the outer two seats. And you've got a button on here, you've got two temperature settings, um, you've got high and low, so you can actually adjust the temperature for the two outer seats as well. We've then got another dial there to adjust the fan speed uh, for the air conditioning with the vents up here. Um, and then we've got a USB-A and a USB fast charger. Uh, so again, quite handy to have. The beautiful leather carries through into the back seats. So you've got all this sort of diamond quilting, if you like. Um, you've got the obligatory pull down armrest with a couple of cup holders. And if you're gonna be carrying child seats in the back here, uh, it's good to know that the outer two seats have got the ISOFIX uh, mounting points as well. Uh, to give extra security for your child seats. So that's the second row dealt with. Let me try and get into uh, the back row and see how much space we've got there. Good, the good thing I can do is actually, there's a bar underneath, so I can move the middle row forward slightly. Um, so I'd lose a little bit of leg room, but that's still okay for me. And then it creates a bit more space in the back for whoever sat behind this middle row. Now, whilst we're never gonna get massive amount of space in the back of any seven seat SUV, it's actually not too bad in here. Um, I've got plenty of knee space. Space in my feet is a little bit cramped, if I'm honest, because there's not really um, you know, much room to put your feet down there. Um, but it still feels pretty decent back here. We've got the air vents up over, uh, overhead, uh, which is quite nice. So we can get the air conditioning uh, back into the third row of the car. Uh, cup holders on both sides. We've also got a 12 volt power socket over there on the left. Um, but it's nice that the, the quality of the leather doesn't seem to deteriorate in the back. Uh, it's the same as we get in the front two rows as well. Uh, so that's actually really, really nice to see. So there you go then. That's a bit of a quick look around the new Everest Platinum. Uh, as I said, it's the top of the range car for 2022. It's got all the bells and whistles on it. Um, if you've got any questions you want answering or if you've got any comments, uh, leave them in the comment section for me below. I'll come back to you and answer any questions as soon as I can. Uh, as I said before, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and also hit that notification bell because that way you'll find out whenever any more Everest videos go live because there's going to be videos of the Sport model, the Trend, the Ambiente. Uh, I'll be doing that video, as I mentioned before, about the Active Park Assist as well. Uh, so there's plenty more content to come throughout the rest of the year. So thanks for joining me today. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Uh, I look forward to seeing you all in the next one.